Today we are going to do a dye video on using mushrooms as a natural dye. And I have a very special guest with me today. That is my mom. Hi mom. Hi. My mom has been doing mushroom dyes since what, the 1970s? 1970s. She is the illustrator of the original book on how to dye with mushrooms that was written by Miriam Rice. And you've been teaching dye workshops for many years. About 40 years. About 40 years. So if I'm gonna do a video on dying with mushrooms, she's gotta be here with me, right? Right. Okay. Um, the mushroom we chose to do today is the Western jack-o'-lantern. The scientific name is Umphalotus olivescens. And this is a great mushroom because you can actually make two different colors. You can make green or purple. And the purple can be a little frustrating and sometimes you get gray. So today we're gonna stick with the sure thing and go for a beautiful forest green. Now it's actually a very simple dye to do. We're gonna use the same things that we do for the other dyes I've talked about. We have our dye pot and our heat source and we're gonna use our dye spoon. We have our fiber and I'm using wool again because I like to stick to the animal fibers. And to get the green, we're going to use an alkaline modifier, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And to start off with, we should talk about this mushroom, which we have here. Oh, I should first point out, this is a poisonous mushroom. So before I touch it, gloves on, mom. <laughs> Wait, oh no, mine are inside out. <laughs> I only need nine fingers. <laughs> I'll just use my <laughs> So, Mom, why are we wearing gloves? Because the omphalotus is a poisonous mushroom yes. and it can cause skin irritation, and so it's best to wear gloves when picking it and also when breaking it up. Correct, so this is a poisonous mushroom. Obviously, do not try to eat this mushroom. It's also why we're doing the dye outside today because you wanna make sure there's a lot of ventilation when doing this dye, right? Right. And it's a mushroom and it smells, let's be honest. <laughs> okay, so today we have a dried um, pieces of, of an umphalotus. Let's just call it the Western Jack-o'-lantern. Western Jack-o'-lantern. Okay, today we have a dried version, but you can use this fresh and frozen as well. Yes. So if someone were gonna dry it, like how we have it dried here, how would they do it? Um, the easiest way to use it is a dehydrator, but you wanna have a tray on your dehydrator that is separate from where you would put edible mushrooms. So while we break this up, cause we're gonna break up the mushroom and add it into our water. Um, if people were gonna find this mushroom out in the wild, where would it grow? Where would they find it? In California, we find it um, from November to March, growing on old stumps of hardwood, either oak or madrone. Mm -hmm and sometimes from buried roots it comes up and it comes up almost like a vase shaped um, cluster of these yellow pumpkin colored mushrooms like cooked pumpkin and they grow in clusters and they have the same color for the gills and mm -hmm. for the cap and for the stem i think it's best to use this mushroom when it's old yeah older rather than than very young it seems to have more dye potential and sometimes the very old ones, you pick them up and start tearing them apart and you'll see kind of a purplish color inside. Yeah, and if there's maggots inside, then that's a good sign. Yeah, so that means it's very mature. Oh, and the reason it's called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom is yeah. because it glows in the dark at night. Oh yeah. If it's fresh. And I have a lot of stories about that. <laughs> Mom, I bet you have a lot of stories about a lot of things. Yes, I do. Okay, so we're gonna continue tearing these up and then we're just gonna simmer this at a low heat for about a half an hour or so until you can really start seeing like, it's really kind of like the purple coming out of the sort mushroom, of, Yeah, right? sort of a purpley brown. Purpley brown. First of all, you see kind of a brown and you say, oh, phooey. And then the starts slowly kerning purple and then you know that the pigment is being released. 
So mom, I think this looks good. What do you think? Yes, definitely. And it's been going, would you say maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Oh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, but most importantly, it's the color that is like purplish red. Yes. So you can see that the dye is completely um, gone from the mushroom and into the water. So one thing I should mention is ratio. So when you're doing a dye, you wanna do an equal portion to ratio. Right, right? Uh, of dried mushroom to dried yarn. Okay. So if you have four ounces of yarn and then you would wanna have at least four ounces of mushroom. So really, like I always say, the more is the better. But more is better always. More is better always. See where I learned it from? Okay, so now that we have this done, why don't we first check the pH as it is now and then we're going to raise it, correct? Okay. Okay, and at this point I don't need my gloves on, so I can take these off. Here are your pH papers. Thank you, Mom. And I will take notes. Thanks, Mom, because you always tell me to always take notes. Yes. So to start off, our pH is about 5, 6, which is typical and we want to raise it to 10 because 10 means it's an alkaline dye bath. And do you know why it is we want to make it alkaline to make the green dye? Magic. <laughs> Perfect, okay. I, uh, yeah, that's the best answer I can come up with. That works for me. Let's say magic and chemistry. chemistry. Okay, so we're going to use washing soda although people can also use household. Use household ammonia, but the fumes are can be obnoxious and that's why I prefer to use washing soda. Yeah, that's actually where I got the jar as you gave it to me. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna add in a teaspoon at a time. One teaspoon? Yes, and then we're gonna check the pH and okay. see how high we can get it. Ideally, 10. Okay. So add some washing soda. Let's check this pH. Oh. Oh. Eight. You're up to eight already. Okay. Let's add another teaspoon. Equals pH eight after one teaspoon. Okay. Yes. And now I'm adding a second teaspoon. Give it a nice stir. And you can see the color of the dye is actually gone, is that brown? Yeah. Which is actually a good sign. When yeah, it's gone from purple to brown. Yes, which you want when you're going for green. Oh yeah, look at that. Nine, should we add a little more? Just a wee bit more. Maybe, okay, half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm guessing half, but it looked close to half. Ooh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Now you don't want to go any higher than 10 because especially using washing soda with an iron mordant that can make the um, yarn brittle and break e more easily. Right. So 10 is your absolute limit. 10 is the limit. And I'm glad you brought up the fact that we did a mordant with iron. Yes. And the pre-mordant with iron, the iron attaches to the um, little spaces on the yarn mm -hmm. and then um, when you put the um, pre-mordanted yarn into the dye the pigment is attaching to the actual um, mordant on the yarn and that makes it bind and become light fast and color fast so that's why we like to pre-mordant our yarn ahead of time ahead of time that's why i pre-mordant everything is because that's what you taught me yeah, no, that's, that's, I think for light fastness, that's the best way to go. Yeah. Um, so before we added our yarn in, we soaked it in warm water. Yes. Because you don't want to shock the yarn, is that right? Yes, and if, if you put in cold yarn into hot water, then that's when you start adding um, and start stirring, that's when you get felting. So you don't want it to be at a simmer at this point. You want nice low heat with the washing soda and the iron mordanted wool. Yes. Okay, let's add this yarn. And see the iron is, has changed the color of the white yarn to sort of a yellowish green. Mm -hmm. That's the way it reacts. And then the dye is going to react with the mordant. 
and in it goes. Now, other times when we do this dye, we put it in and it turns brown and I'm always annoyed and frustrated. And <laughs> you always tell me to be patient. Yes, patience is very important. A lot of times you will do a natural dye and you'll put it in and it'll go yellow or red and it's this exciting wow moment. That's not gonna happen with this. It's gonna start off brown and then over time, it will turn to green. It was been about 30 minutes or so, do you think? At least. At least 30 minutes, and I've been very good. I haven't been messing with it. Yeah, right. And so at this point, we're going to check it, and we can already tell it looks it looks pretty good. I'm excited to see. Yes. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. <gasps> oh, oh, that's beautiful. It's a really nice, Dark, deep, deep, dark green. Foresty green. Yes. I would let that dry um, before rinsing it out. Okay. And then when you do rinse it out tomorrow, let it dry for 24 hours. Okay. Then rinse it out tomorrow with a very uh, gentle soap and water, some ivory soap. You want to have an alkaline wash, uh, washing and uh, uh, rinsing because you don't want to change. We don't want to change the, the pH, pH of accidentally the yes. back the other way. Right. Right. So I think um, that's it. Patience works. Patience works. Mom, thank you so much. Thank for you for doing Myra. this with me today. <laughs>